Did it pop out? Nope. Not for crying out loud. Everybody knows pinball. It's uniquely American. It's like a hamburger. And it didn't come from another part of the world. We exported it like jazz. 99% of the time, a repair is much more economical than a replacement. I mean, if we just never repaired anything, the Earth would be just a giant dump. You'd have to, what, are you gonna shoot the stuff into space? I'm Mike Hooker, and I repair pinball and other coin-operated arcade games. We live in a disposable society. When our technology breaks, we replace it. But the art of repair is still practiced by a select few in our tech-obsessed culture. Pinball's resurgence has led to a need for people who can fix these complex machines. Unfortunately, few remain. We met with two of the last remaining repair techs keeping these games alive. A long time ago, a friend of mine called me and he said, hey, you know anybody wants to buy a pinball machine? I said, well, I never had a pinball machine, I'll take it. And I got it working, and I had an auto repair shop, and I put it in the waiting room, and it was fun, and the customers went crazy. They played it to death. So I'll start fixing pinball machines and fix them up and selling them and this and that. And that's what I do. This is uh, the basement. It's where I do my thing. And I do a lot of things down there besides fix pinball, but a little bit of music, watch TV. They were only really built the last five years. They were built to suck the quarters out of people's pockets and then get tossed. Because the idea was people are gonna play it until they're bored with it, they wanna see a new machine. So they didn't make them to last it's amazing they last as long as they do. The people that made pinball, they had their finger right on the pulse of, like, American culture. And it's almost like a historical record. The heyday was the 70s. And then they lost their way in, like, the 90s when there was, nobody had any imagination. They just, whatever crappy movie comes out, they license it. People do love those games, but those are the games that kind of put pinball out of business because they were very expensive to make, they used to break a lot, and they weren't making money in the arcades, and the guys got fed up with them. I get people come in here that probably didn't even know the difference between pinball and ping pong, and all of a sudden are coming in here and judging the condition of my roadshow, and I'm like, there's a roadshow machine out in a bar. Eight years ago, that would never have been an option. My name is John Ehrlich. I'm the owner of Jack Bar here. We're definitely seeing a resurgence. What I think is the real reason that pinball has come back is because well, for starters, the manufacturers have stepped it up. And now there's a couple of garage game manufacturers, like guys like building them from scratch. Now there's like good games out there. Like, and people are realizing, oh, pinball's awesome. Pinball machines break down daily. There's no pinball repair people out there. There's three that I can think of in the tri-state area. And I believe you spoke with one of them. Most of the repairs are house calls because the games are just so heavy to move. They basically work like Mary Poppins out of a bag. Okay, the problem left with this game is this one, it pops, but it's not adding points. And this is a difficult thing to fix because to fix it, you have to lift this up and you know, and then there's no, it doesn't prop up like, like this does, and you gotta turn on its side, and every time you touch something, something else breaks, and then you got 50 billion connectors down there, and 
The connectors are not the greatest connectors. That's a big problem with these games. So now we got to go to the switch that's in question, which is here. And, and that's uh, not good. Now we have to look in the book. The schematics were provided for most of the games when they were sold. And six way four blue, yellow, yellow on another. I can see right here, this wire vibrated off. There's a cottage industry of people that make spare parts. Without them, it would be really, really get hard to fix all the games because the parts would just dry up. And you give it a good tug because you want to make sure it's not going to come apart in the near future. And that's on there. So I would put it back down, try it out. See how it's adding points? This one wasn't, and now it is. I fixed two of them yesterday. The upper right flipper on Twilight Zone, had to open it up, solder a wire back on. It's a pretty easy fix. Fishtails, similar problem. The coil, spark coming off of it, it was shorting out. Thankfully, I keep a ton of replacement parts, literally thousands of dollars in parts. These things are just filled with particular screws, flipper rubber bands. These things wear out all the time. Switches up the fucking wazoo. Light bulbs, there's a big one. Fuses, these things blow fucking constantly. It's mostly part sourcing. In some cases, they're just unfindable at all. Like this one only works in Terminator 3, made by Stern. If I buy their game that they made prior to that or the game that they made after that, it doesn't use this switch. Let's see what we got here. I don't even need this part. I will eventually. Like how many people have a Dr. Dude ramp sitting in a box in their office? Do you think there's a bright future for you and people like you in this industry? Ah, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, it seems to be going strong. Pinball prices are through the roof. So I guess there will be a future because people put money in them and if they don't repair them, they're worthless. And I, I think they're absolutely worth saving. And I like taking something that didn't work and making it work. <laughs>